Does, uh, does anybody know what, what movie this, is, this scene is from here? Anybody know what movie that is? Okay, thank you. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Uh, one of the absolute classic Western movies from the 70s. You guys have seen this? Have you seen it? Does anyone know the, the, the theme song from The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly? <clears throat> you know what? Yeah. Do -do -do. Wah, wah, wah. You guys know that? What a great movie. Such a great movie. This, this scene from the movie is um, it's like my favorite scene. It is one of the high points of the movie where the, the three main characters, which are Angel Eyes up there at the top, he's the bad, and then Tuco is the ugly in the middle, and Blondie, who is the good down at the bottom. The three of them find themselves in like a standoff, you know? They're in a circle, in a standoff with each other. Uh, none of them like each other, but they're all interconnected in this, um, this search for this gold that has been buried in an unmarked grave. And so the three of them, the three of them are in the circle in a standoff, and they're all waiting to see who's gonna make the first move and who they're gonna shoot because none of them like each other, you know? So does the good go after the ugly or the bad? The ugly hates them both, so does he go after the good or the bad? The bad is just a jerk, so does he go after the good or the ugly? And nobody knows, and, and no one knows who's gonna go first or who they're gonna shoot, and so the camera just keeps going around and around from one person to the next to the next to the next, and it goes around and around waiting to see who's gonna go first and who they're gonna shoot and the tension keeps building. Now, obviously, I'm not gonna tell you what happens, but if anyone here has not seen this and you wanna watch this movie together after church, I will bring the popcorn. I will bring the popcorn. It is such a good movie. You know, I, I, I have to admit that I have found myself in that kind of a situation before in my life, actually many times. Um, sometimes as the good, and sometimes as the bad, and very often as the ugly. Um, but I have. I found myself in that situation where I'm kind of standing there and I'm not really sure, like, what to do, you know? And sometimes it's because I'm having trouble reading a, a situation and sometimes it's because I'm not sure what the other people around me are going to do and sometimes I'm just kind of going through my options, trying to figure out, like, like, what the best option would be. But as I'm standing there, you know, not really sure what to do, my guess is that uh, everyone else looks at me and, and thinks that I look kind of like a doofus. You know, just standing there, not sure what to do. And I probably, to be honest, I probably do look like a doofus. But it's because I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what to do, and I don't want to do the wrong thing. And so I'm kind of standing there, just waiting to get a sense of what to do. And there's, there are so many situations in my life that are like that, where I'm, I'm, I'm trying to read a situation or the people around me, and so I just kind of stand still for a little bit, trying to get a sense of, of what, to do, what to do next. And you know, um, we talk, we've talked the last couple of weeks about how, how busy our lives are and how full our lives can get. And, and I think that, makes, that means that sometimes you and I feel like we don't have time to stand there looking like a doofus, you know? We've got to make decisions, and we've got to make the decisions quickly because the people around us aren't going to stand around long enough for us to stand there and, and kind of assess all of our options. Isn't that true? Does that seem true sometimes? You know, I think that that's, I think it's true as long as we choose that to be true. You know, have, have you ever guys ever wondered, like, why we allow our schedules to become so jam-packed? Do you ever wonder that? Like, why we allow this to happen? I, I was talking to someone recently, and they said that, that their whole schedule from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. was scripted out for them. You know, from the time they were getting up in the morning, they were getting up and getting kids ready to go for the day and getting them dressed and ready for school and getting them breakfast, taking them to school, taking the dog to the vet, getting laundry done, um, getting grocery shopping done, picking kids up from school and taking one to band practice and one to soccer practice and then getting dinner ready and then picking kids up from activities and getting them dinner and getting them ready for bed and then finally at the end of the day, checking themselves into an asylum. 
You know, and it feels that way. I, don't, I really don't think that that's really out of the ordinary for a lot of people, you know? We've got so much stuff going on, and it's so busy, and it's so crazy that we, we don't have time to stop and rest, let alone figure out what direction we should be going in life, you know? And, and so the question, I think, is, is all of that stuff, is it, is it necessary? And some people think it is. I'll tell you what, some people think all the stuff in our lives is necessary, right? Because we want, we want our kids to feel fulfilled by being involved in a lot of activities and we want the house to be clean and we want order and we want routine so that we have that feeling of accomplishment. But you know, you know what ends up happening? Is that we, it, it, when our schedule is like that, that full, we, we kind of just guess at what direction to go. We guess. Or else we just go with the flow and we're just moving along kind of an autopilot. And so when we, when we talk about um, slowing our lives down over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about slowing our lives down. The danger in not doing that, the danger in refusing to do that, is that when it comes to the direction that God wants your life to go, you may or may not be going that direction. But if you are, it's probably by accident. You know? I mean, if God is opening up doors for you to show you what direction to go, are you noticing them? Do you see where those doors are and where the action is that God is creating? Or are the days just kind of slipping by without us really moving in any, um, any real direction? You know, for a long, long time, uh, God's people were, they were trapped in Egypt um, as, as slaves. And uh, they had gotten used to the idea that life stunk. You know, life had always stunk as, as far as they could remember. And they just guessed that life would always stink. And until God started opening doors and creating action through, through Moses. And this, um, the story that, that you would see this in is in Exodus uh, near the beginning of the Bible. But it was because, it was because Moses paid attention and it was because he observed what was going on that God was able to use him to lead the people out of, out of captivity. Um, but, but as soon as Moses did that, as soon as Moses got the people out of Pharaoh's grasp, Pharaoh was the bad guy, right? And as soon as he got them out of Pharaoh's grasp, um, the Israelites, the, God's people ran into a problem. And I want us to look at that together. Um, if you've got a Bible with you, turn, turn to Exodus 14. It's way at the beginning. If you don't have a Bible, you use a cell phone or tablet, or grab one of these in front of you. In, in the racks in front of you, you got these Bibles. There's blue ones and there's large print. On the blue ones, it's, uh, it's on page 58. And in the maroon large print, it's on page 109. 58 and 109. So we're looking at Exodus 14. And you know, while, while you're looking this up, um, kind of get, get a sense of, of how, how hard it would be to relate to what the people were, were feeling back then. I mean, these, the people, all their lives, all their lives had been so rough. You know, they had never experienced freedom from the day they were born. From the day they were born until that present day, they had never experienced freedom, ever. And all of a sudden, Moses comes and he says, hey guys, God says it's time to go. Let's go. Pack up and go. And they believe him. They do it. And they start walking out. And as they're experiencing the first taste of freedom ever, they have never experienced freedom before. And as they're experiencing it ever, they come across this obstacle, which is the Red Sea. Right, the Red Sea is blocking their way. Now normally it's not a big deal, right? You just build a boat or go around it. But here's the problem. At that moment, Pharaoh changes his mind and decides he wants his slaves back. And so he musters up his army and starts going after the people. Now, Pharaoh's army is coming up on him and their way is blocked by the sea, right? And so the people, they start to flip out. All right, so take a look and see what happens. It's in verse 10. Go down to verse 10 in chapter 14. And this is what he says. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. And they cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you that this would happen while we were still in Egypt? Egypt. 
We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. And you know, I, I, I guess I understand their reaction, right? I mean, their reaction makes some sense. I, when I find myself going through some hard times in my life, I probably react the same way. You know, thanks for the raw deal, God. Appreciate all your help, God. Thanks a lot. I get that. I totally understand their reaction. But look what Moses says. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. And I, I want to make sure we don't skim too fast over those words, just stand still. Just stand still. Because I think the natural reaction there would be to, to panic, right? And that's what they were starting to do. They were starting to panic, right? Quick, quick, we need, we need a plan B, fast. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And Moses goes, shh, stand still. Be calm. Watch what God is going to do. And if you go down, to, go down to 21, you see what God does. The rest of that is like God reinforcing what he's going to do to Moses. But go down to 21. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. Isn't that cool? You, do you guys see? This never would have happened if the people were not willing to be still and wait for what God was going to do. This would not have happened if they had not stood there and waited for the action that God was going to create. And you guys want to know something? The same is true in our lives. The same is true for us. If those Israelites had reacted on emotion or on instinct, you, what would they have done? They probably would have jumped into the sea or scattered or gone back to the Egyptians as slaves, right? And this amazing journey through the sea would never have happened. If they allowed their emotions to take over, this never would have happened. Do you guys see that when our lives become so overwhelming and so busy and so chaotic, do you guys see that if God is creating action in certain parts of our lives, we may very well miss it? Do you guys see how that could happen if we're so busy and so crazy or, or just reacting on emotion? So what, what I want to do is I want to take a couple of minutes this morning and just give you some really quick tips on how to see where God is opening doors in your life and how God may be creating action in your life, okay? I'm going to give you a couple of quick tips on that. Now, all of the, these tips require, you know, maybe a small level of adjustment in the way that we live our lives, in the way that we make decisions, in the way that we react on emotion, it all requires some level of adjustment. But I, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because if we don't, if we want to see things a new way, we've got to adjust the way that we do things, right? I mean, doesn't it make sense? If we're not willing to make small adjustments in our lives, then we're, we're, we're probably going to see things today the same way that we saw things yesterday, doesn't that make sense? That if I do things exactly the same way all the time, whatever I missed last week, I'm going to miss next week too. Right? Doesn't that make sense? So, so here's a couple of tips on how to, how to see where God is creating action um, in your lives. Tip number one, stop rushing through your day. Stop rushing through your day. You know, if, if we are in a hurry to always get things done. It, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it, that we're going to miss things that are on the side as we go. We're going to miss some things if we're always in a hurry. Last week, we talked a little bit about the Sabbath day, you know, and how God gave us the Sabbath as a built-in rest time, a time to focus and a time to, to listen and to pay attention to him. And, and uh, you know, to tell you the truth, you've got to have little blocks of time like that in your day. You've got to have little blocks like that in your day as well to refocus and to listen and to pay attention. I'm thinking about that person who's got their schedule packed from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you know people like this, right? Sometimes you are people like this. That schedule is packed so tightly that God could literally be sitting on the couch and the person would not notice. 
you know? And sometimes, sometimes I, I think people are probably gonna say, but I can't help it. I mean, I've got so much to do. I mean, I can't help that my schedule is that full. I cannot help it. That's the attitude right there that I want to challenge you on this week. I want you to really think that through. Is it really necessary that we have all this stuff in our schedules? Is that really necessary? Because we've talked about this before. We have. That either you control your schedule or your schedule will control you. And that makes sense. It does. You control your schedule or your schedule will control you. So you've got to look at that. And you've got, you might have to make some tough decisions. You might have to cut your workout short a little bit. Or you might have to miss a TV show that you really like. Or, or you might, I tell you, you might have to limit the activities that your kids can be involved in. And I'll tell you, sometimes that's actually healthier for them. Don't you think? Sometimes, we, sometimes we're pushing our kids a little, a little too much and actually creating some, some stress in their lives. So these are some of the decisions that, that we have to make. But if we don't write in little blocks of time in our schedule, if we don't write that in, then we're probably gonna miss some action that God is creating in our lives, open, open doors that he wants us to go through. All right, so that's tip number one. Um, tip number two is, is I, I think this is kind of an obvious one when you think about it, but it, it needs to be said as a reminder. Um, pay attention to the way things usually are in your schedule and in your routine. Pay attention to that so that you'll know when God is doing something new, all right? Pay attention to how things normally go so you'll know when God is doing a new thing. And I, I think of this like for myself, like personally in my personal life, but I also think about this when it comes to the church. You know, I, I, watch, uh, I watch trends in the church. I do. I watch, like, you know, who, who usually comes to what kind of events and, and how often are people coming and what, how do things normally go. And so what I notice is when new people are coming to different things or there's a new energy that's being created, I know God is up to something. You know? I wouldn't notice that. I would not know that if I don't know how things usually are. Right? Doesn't that make sense? And the same thing is true in your personal life. If you've got to know, what are, what, what are your, your routines, your personal routines? What are your family's trends? How do you usually feel? What do you dream about? I mean, know these things, because if you don't know how things usually are, if God is creating new action, you may miss it. All right? So know how things usually are. So that's, that's the, I know that seems obvious, seems like a no-brainer, but we need to be reminded of that. Just pay attention to how things usually are so you'll know when God is, is doing something new. Okay? Third tip. I told you we're gonna bang, bang. Third tip is um, ask someone else if they can see action that God is creating in your life. You know? Now, for the Israelites, that was Moses, wasn't it? It was Moses. Because the Israelites, they were so locked into their routines that when God starts doing things, they're not even going to notice. They're so used to just doing their own thing. So it took, Moses had to come in and show them that God was doing a new thing. And sometimes it's the same for us. You know, we just get locked into our, our normal routines and we kind of miss the action that God is creating. But sometimes other people notice. So don't be afraid to ask someone, do you see anything new or different going on in my life recently. Maybe they'd be able to see that God is doing something in your life that, that you might be missing. And th th doesn't this ring true? It does, doesn't it? Because, because it's oftentimes easier for us to see things from the outside than the inside. It's oftentimes easier, right? It's easier to identify other people's issues than our own issues sometimes, right? And so don't be afraid to find someone that knows you and someone that is faithful and just ask them this question. Say, how do you see God working in me and through me lately? Ask them. See what they say. Fourth tip and the last one. Last one. Don't be afraid to stand still and just not do anything for a while. Don't be afraid of that. I, I know that we all have pressure on us individually and as families and as, as a church to do more, to keep moving ahead, to stay busy. But you guys, listen, that is not the ultimate goal. It is, staying busy is not the ultimate goal. It's not. You know, we sang songs earlier, right? Like, guide my feet and step by step you lead me, right? We sang those songs. 
that implies being guided by God implies a willingness to be guided. We have to be willing to be guided, right? Moses told the Israelites, he said, just stop, just stand still, just stand still and watch what God is gonna do. And if we as God's people don't do that sometimes, then we find ourselves just reacting on emotion or, or, or on instinct and just moving ahead for the sake of moving ahead. And I know that the fear in this tip, the fear is going back to looking like a doofus. Just standing still, right? You know, people might call me lazy or they might call me unproductive or they might say that, well, nothing's happening in, in, in the life. You know, the hamster wheel is there, but there's nobody who's spinning, whatever. Um, you know, and, that, and that's kind of scary for me. I, 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 I have a need to stay busy, right? It's scary for me to not do anything. And I worry sometimes about what others are going to say. But you guys know something? Sometimes that's the price that we have to pay for stopping, standing still, and listening to what God is saying. There's plenty of warning in the Bible. There's plenty of warning about guarding our reputation at the expense of being faithful to God. There's plenty of that in the Bible. And if we're so concerned about staying busy, for the sake of staying busy or looking productive, we're so concerned about that, that we're not willing to stop and listen to God, then you might live a very busy life, but it may not be faithful. Next week, we're gonna wrap up the idea of slowing down. Next week, we're gonna wrap it up by, by talking about how God may be uh, using people around you, working in the people around you, and maybe they don't even know it. But I want you guys to be able to identify how God may be working in those people, but we gotta slow down to do that. This week though, I want you guys to pay attention to how God is, is creating action in your life. What is God doing in your life? God, listen, God could, God could part the Red Sea for you. And if you're already halfway around it, you're not even gonna notice. Slow down. Watch what God is doing. All right. Let's pray together as our ushers come up this morning.